Today, I'm gonna to show you how to work in the lab color space in DaVinci Resolve 16. And fair warning, this is gonna get a little bit nerdy. Let's take a look. One of the things I love about video editing is just the amount of stuff that you can do and experiment with. There's just always something new to discover, especially in color grading and especially in color grading in DaVinci Resolve. And a couple weeks ago on my live stream, one of my subscribers, one of my, my most active community members actually, told me that he had been experimenting with the lab color space in DaVinci Resolve. Now I had played around with the lab color space in Photoshop before, but never in DaVinci Resolve. So I dove in and I started playing around with lab color space in DaVinci Resolve. And it really like, uh, it just immediately dawned on me that this kind of opened up a whole new world of color grading possibilities. So I wanted to make a video so I could turn that knowledge around and give it to you because I mean, gee, You'll, you'll see. Now, originally this was supposed to be kind of a super nerdy video where I dive into all of the different color spaces and explain the difference between the two and why you would use one over the other. But uh, instead, I'm going to just tell you the three big things that change when you move over to the lab color space. But if you do want to learn a little bit more about color science, color spaces, and all that stuff, let me know in the comments below. So one of the things that changes when you move over to the lab color space is the fact that you're just dealing with a wider range of colors. The lab color space is the largest of the different color spaces. It's bigger than RGB, it's bigger than CMYK. Also on top of that, you're dealing with more primary colors. So with RGB, that stands for red, green, and blue. And that's because those are the colors that you're working with. Everything that you see in your image is a different combination of red, green, and blue. But with lab, you're actually getting four primary colors. You're dealing with green, magenta, blue, and yellow. And then the third thing that changes is the lightness. The, the luminance is completely separate from the color. So you can set your lightness, you can set your contrast and all of that, and then you can start tweaking your colors and it's not going to mess with your contrast, which is absolutely phenomenal. So in order to show you how powerful this is, I've got a clip lined up here. This is just a guy walking on a road through the woods. It's actually a clip from ArtGrid, which is where I get all of my stock footage from. If you sign up through the link in my description, then you'll actually get two free months on top of an annual subscription. So I would definitely check that out. They've got a bunch of great footage. So this is just a basic clip here. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna try and create a color grade in a single node with just using the curve. So what we're gonna do here, and this is in just regular sRGB, I think we're in sRGB maybe, and we're going to go ahead and we're gonna get a little bit, we're just gonna up the exposure a little bit actually because this is a pretty dark image. So I'm gonna up the exposure just a little bit, maybe add a tiny bit of contrast. That looks good right about there. And now I'm gonna start tweaking these curves one by one. We're gonna start with red. What I'm gonna do is bring, I'm gonna take away some red. There we go, give us a nice cyan color in the shadows. And we're going to add a little bit of green to the shadows. You can see already right there, my contrast is kind of being affected here. This is becoming kind of a muddy, flat image that I'm not really a fan of. And blue, we're gonna go ahead and add some blue in there as well. That gives me a little bit more contrast back. Now let's go up to right around where the skin is. And we're going to take out some blue and we're going to add some red, if my mouse will cooperate. There we go. Now that's okay, but we lost a lot of contrast there and it's kind of a flat image and I'm not really, I'm not really liking it. The colors are kind of washed out and I could probably tweak it a little bit more and really get what I'm looking for. But that's basically 
Like it's a lot of work to be able to do that in RGB. Now let's go ahead and reset this node and I'm gonna show you what we can do with the lab color space. First of all, in order to switch over to lab color space, you just right click on a node, come down to color space and choose lab. And now let me show you what everything does. So what lab stands for, L-A-B is lightness, A and B, and A and B is kind of inconsequential. It could stand for basically anything, but basically the A channel is your greens and your magentas and your B channel is your blues and your yellows. So in DaVinci Resolve, in the curves, what we're doing is we're completely negating this Y. The Y doesn't do anything anymore. So red is our lightness. So let's go ahead and do what we did before. I'm gonna go ahead and raise that lightness just a little bit. I like that there and maybe add a tiny bit of contrast. Okay, that's looking good right there. And now our green curve is our greens and magentas. So if I pull down on this curve, you'll see I'm adding a bunch of green. And if I push up, I'm adding a bunch of magenta and then blue is blue and yellow. So let's go ahead and grab that blue curve. And if I pull down, we've got blue. And if I push up, we've got yellow. So let's go ahead and do what we did before. We're gonna go ahead and add some green to the shadows, which at the same time is kind of taking away some magenta from the shadows. And you see that when I do that, unlike with the RGB, I'm retaining my contrast and I'm retaining my luminance, which is really nice. Now we're gonna come over to blue and we're gonna bring some blue into the shadows. That's looking really good right there. And then what I'm gonna do is come up here and I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of magenta. Might be a little bit too much there. So let's bring it down, let's just bring it down right to that center line. There you have it. If we deactivate that node, there's our original. And there is our completed image. And there you go. I just created a color grade in one single node, which a lot of you have actually asked me about when I do my color grading tutorials. Lab, if you wanna do everything in one node, Lab is really the way to go. Now, a couple things to keep in mind when you are working in the lab color space, a lot of the other tools won't really work. Most of the scopes get a little bit wonky when you start working in lab. And also a couple of the other tools don't really work. Like saturation does not affect your image at all. So you actually have to use the curves for saturation. Let me show you how to do that real quick. Let's go ahead and we're gonna add a new node. Let's go ahead and just deactivate this one. Go ahead and change this over to the lab color space. And what I'm gonna do is come down, let's start with the green curve. I'm just gonna add some magenta and I'm going to add some yellow. And then down here, I'm going to add some green and I'm going to add some blue. Now, obviously that is way, way, way oversaturated. So what we can do is we can come into the key for this node and we can drop that down to probably 0.3 and still get a decent, decent bit of saturation there. So uh, this is one of the things that I love about the lab color space is you can basically do a color grade in one node. Now from there, I would go on, I would add my vignette, I would add my sharpening, my noise reduction and all of that stuff. But for the most part, as far as the look is concerned, it's done in one single node, which is absolutely amazing if you ask me. And when you add this into the rest of my color grading workflow, 
uh, it's just amazing results. And if you want to learn more about my color grading workflow, make sure you check out this video right here. And for more tools, tips, and tricks that will help you become a better video editor, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.